Hey guys, it's EG and it's about time for episode 3 of Distro Delves where we're going to be taking a look at Elementary OS 5.0. Let's check it out. Good old Elementary OS is an ideal distro for the series because it is actively targeted at new and regular desktop users and brings along with it its own set of unique apps. Now at the time of this video, Elementary OS 5.1 is right around the corner and while we'll be looking at 5.0 in this video, you'll probably see a lot of features from 5.1 here and there. Elementary OS uses the exact same installer as Ubuntu. There's been a lot of talk about transitioning to a fancy new installer, but at this point in time, it's just the same old ubiquity that we saw in episode one. User setup is done in the installer itself rather than a new user welcome screen like some distros such as Fedora use. And in fact, Elementary OS doesn't even have a welcome screen, at least not yet. That's another in the works feature from what I understand. The ISO I used to install Elementary was dated back in October, so there are a ton of updates to download and install. The Elementary team is working on a CI process that automatically rebuilds the ISO regularly, but at this point in time, it seems to be a monthly or so process. The application manager is Elementary's very own app center. It's not GNOME software or a fork of it. It's its own thing, which is pretty cool. The update process through App Center provides relatively little feedback or information. However, if you want more information about what's being updated, you could just run the update from a terminal. Our NVIDIA drivers can be installed straight from App Center. The latest version as of the video is 4.30, which isn't quite the latest version available, but it's close enough. Now, despite being built on the shoulders of Ubuntu LTS, Elementary OS ships its very own desktop environment called Pantheon. Pantheon provides the desktop environment itself, but there are also a variety of default apps that ship with Elementary, from the file browser to photo viewer. Pantheon also has its very own system settings app as well, which includes basic settings, but also more advanced settings around privacy, firewalls, and parental controls. Cool. So as we saw when we did the initial update, Elementary OS uses App Center for managing applications. I found that the search in App Center can be rather finicky at times, an App Center always lists curated apps first, which makes sense for the distro, but I can see it making certain apps somewhat difficult to find, but there are a whole host of curated apps built specifically for elementary OS, so it's not really that big of a deal. And since elementary OS runs atop Ubuntu, the backend package manager is apt. Switching gears to third-party app support, despite being based on Ubuntu, elementary does not support snaps and it is not installed by default. Flatbacks are supported though, however as of Elementary OS 5.0, you need to manually install the Sideload app to integrate Flatpaks into App Center. Without the Sideload app, you'll be installing Flatpaks from the CLI, which is what I did for this video. Once the Sideload app is installed, you can install Flatpak refs via App Center and apps from Flathub will appear in App Center too. So just like Ubuntu, app image support worked mostly out of the box after toggling the executable flag via files' is somewhat awkward permissions dialog, but it did work, so. Now I was able to install all of my core apps, with the exception of Lutris, which has to be installed via PPA, which Elementary does not support. So if you want to install Lutris on Elementary, you're out of luck, unless you want to enable PPA support, which is outside the scope of this video. Now let's talk about volumes and network discovery. There's not much to say about internal and external volumes. They mounted flawlessly right out of the box. No passwords, no errors or dialogues, no bullshit. In my opinion, Elementary OS sets the golden standard in this regard. On the flip side, network discovery was another story. So there's no clear way of creating a Samba share and the built-in media sharing tools didn't work for me at all. I enabled the media shares, but I couldn't discover any shares on my network from my Windows laptop or my Linux workstation. I also wasn't able to connect to my Windows machine from elementary. Now I've always found this network connection dialog overly complex and it's entirely possible that I'm entering something wrong here, but nothing I tried worked. I even connected to the Windows share from my Linux workstation without any issues, so I know that the share is set up properly. I also wasn't initially able to discover my workstation on the network either. This turned out to be like a page or refresh issue. I had to press F5 while I was looking at the network connections tab and then it popped up, but it wasn't there at first. Now Elementary OS's printer settings is pretty darn cool. Much like Fedora, it automatically detected my printer and installed the drivers, but it was disabled by default, which is a little odd. And even after I enabled it, the settings applet still said that it was disabled. 
Now finally, let's talk about resources and benchmarks. The resource utilization metrics provided by HTOP provided to be rather interesting. At first, we see the memory usage is a delightfully low 685 megabytes. That is, until App Center starts up, then the CPU goes bonkers and the memory usage spikes dead at almost one gigabyte before leveling out at just over 800 megabytes. The number of active tasks fluctuates between 98-ish and about 105. There's also several App Center processes running, but they all appear to be sharing the same thread. This may help explain why App Center feels sluggish at times, especially after boot. Hopping over to the Geekbench side of things, we'll see that Elementary OS got higher scores all around than Ubuntu did. Now we'll dive a bit deeper into the configuration of the two distros, such as the kernel versions and things like that in the season finale, but for now let's just say that Elementary OS is faster than Ubuntu. According to Geekbench anyway. But what does that mean for the gaming benchmarks? Remember that Elementary OS and Ubuntu are using the same NVIDIA driver, version 430, and given that Elementary OS got better scores in Geekbench, that should translate into higher frame rates, right? Well, no, not necessarily. GTA 5 achieved slightly lower frame rates than Ubuntu, coming in at 27 frames a second. Ubuntu got a hair above 30. Oh, and also, I'm reusing the benchmark footage here because I haven't actually played GTA 5 yet. I need to sit down and put an hour or two into the game so I can capture some better footage for the video, but the benchmark numbers are coming from the benchmark built into the game. Tomb Raider told a similar story at 33.7 frames a second, elementary clocked in just below Ubuntu, which gave us 34.4 frames. Differences this little are negligible, and you most likely wouldn't even notice them in the game. CSGO also wasn't a surprise, clocking in at 50 frames a second against Ubuntu's 51 frames a second. And at last we arrive at UniEngine Valley, which clocked 13.8 frames a second against Ubuntu's 13.7. Finally, a winner! Well, sort of. Again, these differences are negligible at best, and we can probably just say that Elementary OS and Ubuntu LTS are on par with each other as far as sheer performance goes. And the benchmark charts say pretty much the same thing. Elementary OS got better Geekbench scores, but the frame rates are roughly equivalent to Ubuntu LTS. So the question for the episode is, how does Elementary OS compare to Ubuntu LTS? I'm inclined to say pretty damn well. I think that the only thing that Ubuntu does better than Elementary is around networking and file sharing. Fedora had rather similar issues around file sharing, particularly with Samba. Performance-wise, the results of the benchmarks suggest that Elementary OS is as fast, if not faster, than Ubuntu in some regards, but the differences are pretty small. Which shouldn't be surprising since Elementary OS is based on Ubuntu. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this episode of Distro Delves. Elementary OS has been probably the single most popular request, and I'm really glad to have had the opportunity to make it for you. Remember that these episodes are written from the perspective of a desktop user, not a power user or developer. If you'd like to learn more about the Distro Delves series, I wrote an article about it on Medium. And as I said in the Fedora video, these videos are a lot of work to produce, and I'm constantly making tweaks to the scripts for season one. Season 2 should be much more static and kind of every episode is going to follow the same sort of pattern. Things are still evolving right now. And of course, if you did enjoy the video, be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Let me know in the comments what I did wrong, because there's always something wrong. And why don't you let me know what distro you use and what distro you'd like me to take a look at. I get people recommending me to look at distros like Gentoo or Clear Linux, but remember the series is around distros and operating systems that are meant for desktop users, so in my opinion that kind of excludes distros like Gentoo. But hey, what do I know? Just let me know what you think. I appreciate all your support, and thanks for watching.